Number 1. Multilayered Lies How do you expose a liar? This trick has been used for centuries and has helped solve a huge number of criminals. When an unfaithful spouse tries to lie about his whereabouts last night, he usually limits himself to superficial details. The man deceives by relying only on sight and hearing. But we can go beyond that. Try asking some deep questions related to the other senses. For example, ask about the taste of a dish he claims to have eaten. Or clarify the details of the soccer game he was watching. Most liars aren't ready for that kind of detail and get confused. This is a great way to expose their lies. Have you encountered pathological liars? Tell us in the comments. Number 2. Eye Contact You've probably heard the expression eyes don't lie. The eyes are the mirror of the soul, and they can tell us so much. If your interlocutor is evasive or unwilling to tell you important information, try this trick. Keep standing still and looking directly into his eyes. This may create some pressure and get him to keep talking. The stare and your silence will make it seem like you already know the truth or part of it. The person will understand that it is useless to lie in this situation. It may help you to hear the truth. By the way, write in the comments how often you lie or prefer to always tell the truth. Only write honestly, otherwise it won't be interesting. Number 3. Secret Sympathy Do you want to know if your colleague or acquaintance has feelings for you in return? We have a simple trick for you. While you're gathered in the same company, when you're telling a joke or a joke, pay attention to the person you're interested in. If he is looking at you at that moment, chances are you have a mutual sympathy. Interesting, isn't it? Psychologists have noticed that we often look at people we feel sympathy for when we laugh. So this trick can be useful for revealing secret feelings. Tell me in the comments, how often do you use this trick? Number 4. Make eye contact and nod. When you communicate with someone, try making eye contact more often. But remember that making eye contact too insistently can cause distrust or discomfort. Frequent and brief glances during a conversation will help you make contact and show that you are really listening. Also, remember to nod in agreement or understanding when the person tells you something. This will show that you are listening carefully and that you respect their opinion. After all, we all like to be listened to. Number 5. Open Gestures, Gait, Gestures, Posture When we meet new people, we often subconsciously close up, cross our arms, slouch, and make other gestures that may cause negative impressions in the person we are meeting. To evoke sympathy, try to control your gestures and posture. Remember that a straightened posture, a raised head, hands not in pockets, but loosely placed next to the body, all this will help you create a favorable impression. Even if you're sitting, don't cross your arms over your chest, but try to make your posture look as open and relaxed as possible. Over time, this will become your habit, and you will evoke sympathy from the first seconds of communication, even from strangers. Number 6. How do you recognize stalking? There are times when you feel you are being followed. This can happen on public transportation, in a coffee shop, or even in class. When you turn around, the person who was following you tries to pretend he wasn't paying attention to you and looks the other way. But there is a little trick that can help you determine exactly who was behind you. Just yawn. Yawning is contagious. When we see someone yawning, we often start yawning ourselves. That's how our brain works. So turn around a few seconds after you yawn and the person who was following you will start yawning at that moment. 2. That's the recognition of surveillance. If you felt like yawning while watching this video, give me a Y-E-L-L. Number 7. Give me a choice. You probably know that kids don't always want to eat healthy and fresh food. But how do you get them to eat something healthy? Instead of a direct question like, will you eat broccoli for dinner? You can try a different approach. Ask, say, how many pieces of broccoli should you put in three or four? That way, the child will only have to choose between two choices of broccoli, not between eating or not eating broccoli. And here's the interesting part. After making the choice, he'll feel like he decided to eat the broccoli himself. Amazing, isn't it? This trick also works with adults, so feel free to try it. Number 8. Notice the uncharacteristic behavior. How do you recognize a lie? Many people think that if a person touches their face, crosses their arms, or makes nervous movements, they are lying. But, in fact, this is an incorrect interpretation of gestures. People are much more complicated than they seem. To find out which gestures signal lying, 
You need to observe the person during the course of the conversation. For example, many people think that crossed arms on the chest mean that the person is lying or does not like the person they are talking to. In fact, this hand position is called self-hugging and can be due to tension or just habit. Avoiding eye contact doesn't always indicate lying either. We look away or up when we are thinking or processing information. These are all normal reactions. However, there is something interesting. Watch for deviations in behavior. If a person doesn't usually touch his face or avert his eyes, but starts to do so when answering some questions, he may be lying. But these are not universal signs. They must be analyzed in the context of each individual. Also, pay attention to the frequency of blinking. Usually we blink imperceptibly, but when we are tense or lying, we blink much more frequently or, conversely, slower. Therefore, pay attention to the changes in the blink rate of your interlocutor during a conversation. Usually people blink 10 to 20 times a minute. And remember, a person's face is a great source of information. The muscles of the face may reveal our emotions, even if we are trying to control our behavior. For example, a frown on the forehead or unusual muscle movements may indicate excitement and lying. Number 9. Make eye contact and nod. You probably know that looks and interpersonal communication play a huge role in our interactions. If you want a person to like you and gain their trust, try to maintain eye contact throughout the course of the conversation. But don't go overboard. Do not look at the interlocutor without a break. It can cause confusion or even irritation. Just pause in the conversation and look into the eyes. It will create a sense of mutual attention and build trust. After all, we all love to be listened to. Number 10. Use the word because more often. Who among us doesn't want to convince others of his point of view or get something he dreams about? And that's where a small but powerful tip hack comes to the rescue, using the word because. Studies show that when we give people an explanation or reason for their request, they are much more willing to agree with us. For example, if you're standing in line and want to ask someone to let you through, simply add the word because to your request and explain the reason. For example, let me through, please, because I'm in a hurry. This simple addition will increase your likelihood of being let through in lying by 90%. And remember the study done by Ellen Langer at Harvard? He showed that if you add the word because in some reason to your request, it increases the likelihood of compliance to 93%. Those are the numbers.